and those are the, the measurables, but can you explain the, the things that maybe we wouldn't see statistically that he can make such a difference for you with his experience, ability to, to get people lined up, uh, having been there a little bit? How, how valuable a commodity is he? Yeah, Cody, Cody's the, you know, leader of the defense, the quarterback for the defense, um, conscientious young man and bleeds Ohio State. I mean, there are, as you said, so many more things that he gives the team aside from statistics, and I think it just brings a uh, general confidence to everyone when he's out there. Jim, uh, having somebody like Jermaine Matthews, I think some people would call that a luxury. I think it's more of a necessity in today's game. I know you weren't concerned about him coming onto the field, but what did you think of his response? How did he stay? How did, how did he stay ready? And then, do you agree that it's a necessity? To have somebody like that? Yeah, I mean, this is a long season. Um, strange things can happen, unfortunate things. So, depth is critical. Yeah, we, I mean, Jermaine is in that uh, area I've talked about before of guys who, you know, might not be a starter, but in our mind, he's considered one. So you don't blink when he goes in. I mean, he's a guy who has proven to be able to compete in, you know, the toughest games and situations. So he's kept himself prepare, prepared with a good attitude and, um, you know, came in and did a good job. Go here in the front, Big Bill. I'm going to ask about a couple other young second-year backups, Arbel Reese and Caden McDonald. What are you seeing out of Arbel Reese and Caden McDonald, and do you see their roles continuing to grow this season? Yes, on both. I mean, Arbel has he has made um, tremendous imp improvements since he's arrived here. Um, you're seeing him play fast. He, he's got tremendous physical tools. So for a linebacker, it's just a matter of, you know, knowing what to do and not having to think about it. So what you're seeing out of Arvell now is he's understanding where all the pieces go and he's able to play fast without thinking. Um, you know, K-Mac has been doing a great job since he got here, even on scout team and given our offense fits. So, you know, we've been expecting him to have a breakout year, and he and and he showed it last week. Made a lot of plays. Staying in the front row, Bill Rabinowitz. I asked a similar question of Ryan. I mean, you give it up six points, <clears throat> two long field goals. I don't think you let anybody in the red zone. It, what's yeah? What's your top concern about this defense, if there is one at this point, other than just keep doing what you're doing? Yeah, you know, I, I see a lot of things um, formationally. I see things that. Um, Maybe other people don't. So that's really my biggest concern is just staying top, on top of things that maybe didn't show up in the game, but I saw the possibilities for, you know, down the road and how other people are going to scout us and self-scouting and, you know, seeing what I called and, and how how I can have the, you know more change-ups available when we need them. But it's just... It's just trying to look at every play and seeing what we did, which for the most part has been good, and, and you know what are the other things that can come off of it. How are how are other teams going to look at us? Second round, Stephen. A couple of weeks ago, when we were asking about safety depth, you talked about maybe there's a bit of a gap between obviously where Caleb and Nathan are as experience and two of the best guys in the country, and then where the guys behind them are. Getting Jalen and Malik on the field the last two weeks. Are you seeing some promise that maybe some depth is starting to get built there? Yes, yes. I mean, uh, both of those guys are, are, are coming along. And um, the more reps they get, they've been showing up and, and um, doing all the right things and playing hard and making the checks and, and making plays when their number's called. So the more reps we can get them, the better. Because like I said, football is a – it's a tough game, long season, and we need them. Third row, Rob Oliver. Jim, when you don't, when we don't hear a guy's name up in the press box, is that is he not making plays? Is he's doubled from your experience? Is it just the way the game's going? It's played out. What 
combination of all those things. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, so much happens in in our game that uh, you know most of us can't see, and you never know what the guy's assignment was, what he was taught, what he was trained to do. So it all comes down to the evaluation by the coaches, and you know we have those iPads now, so we're getting everything in real time so you know you can really pretty much grade grade a player after every series i mean you can so you can see what his value is to the defense based on the call but whether his name gets called or not is really not important to us it's more of how is he functioning in the scheme go back to the front row joey coffin Jim, what have you seen um, from, from Ty Hamilton? Uh, this is, he's made an impact and just, what's he doing there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, he, he's, he's been making an impact since I've been here, but he has um, developed into a, a, a dominant player. I mean, he, you know, he's a guy that can control the interior of the line of scrimmage, and that's a big deal. You know, I've always said when your defensive tackles make tackles, it allows you to do other things in coverage and how many people you commit down to the box. So I, you know, he's Ty is quiet, but he's like a cold-blooded gentleman. I mean, he just he he really um, is a force that I think is sometimes maybe difficult to see. Um, but when you watch the tape, he, he is knocking people back and really just creating some difficult situations for the offense. Go deep center field, Jeremy Birmingham. Jim, uh, when you're talking this week, is improvement week. You guys obviously just had a shutout, you know, 99 points and all that stuff. How do you guys get better? Where is the biggest area that you're thinking about heading into this extended time off? Yeah, it comes down to fundamentals one right all those things that uh, um, in matchup games are going to be critical you know whereas maybe we had you know a decided advantage in certain areas um, but when I watch the tape I can see how we have to you know fix certain things or be on top of certain things slight adjustments here or there um, because it'll be critical when you get to the matchup game. So, and then yeah, it's all again. It's all looking at what we did and how future offenses are going to view us and where I'm predicting that the attack will come from. So we try to stay ahead and work in those areas. Go on the aisle here, Bill Landis. Jim, um, with Arbel kind of making the push he seems to be making, and obviously Cody and, and Sonny at linebacker. Are there any discussions about different ways for CJ to still impact things for the defense? I'm just, I'm just wondering if he could potentially be more of a line of scrimmage guy than a, than a linebacker. We haven't uh, discussed that because, you know, CJ is still developing very well and, and you know, he's considered very much a part of, of that mix um, with those guys at linebacker. But, you know, I've said it before, it's, it's always in the back of my mind because, you know, I think he has those gifts and tools to be able to do something like that. So it's nothing we've really uh, discussed, but it's, it's always there for me because I know it may come into play at some point. What, what brings it to the front of your mind? I guess what would have to happen? Well, I would have to, you know, you would have to... Um, maybe uh, experience some depth issues in other places. You know, I mean, we're, we're so uh, talented on the, on the edge right now with, and our depth is, is so good that it's not something that we need to do right now. But, you know, if, if something comes up, it's always a possibility. Got time for three more. We'll go to Camber T. Robinson. Jim, kind of continuing on that, when you, I think a lot of the times this summer we thought of the linebackers, Sonny, Cody, and CJ. How much has Arbell's growth and ascension in that rotation helped you 
find different ways to rotate them and give you more freedom of what you can call just not having four guys with so much in place. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it adds another guy. And Arvell, you know, like I said, his growth has, has really been um, fantastic. And and he's gone through some lulls, you know, as a, as a younger guy. You know, he's gone through some ups and downs. And it's like, you know, it's like a daily thing in practice. And now he's on a path of uh, sustained production. And, and you see him kind of jumping off the film, playing fast. So that adds to our depth at that position, which is really important, particularly when you get into three linebacker looks, you know. Um, it's an extra guy. And uh, we need four, we need five. You know, I've liked actually, I've really liked what Gabe has done in limited rep. You know, he's had limited reps, but he's really done a good job. So I'd like to see him starting to get into that mix. But Arvell has certainly helped us. Uh, on the Iowa, Spencer Holbrook? Jim, how important is it this week during the improvement week to get red zone defensive reps against the offense when you guys haven't had those in a game? Yeah, we do it all the time. Yeah, we do it all the time, and, and Coach Day puts that in um, constantly. We do it every week. You know, of course, we do it against the scouts when we're going against an opponent, but we do it against our offense too. You know, good on good, um, red zone pass stuff, and you know, re regular red zone. We keep it in. You know, against good competition all the time. And we'll wrap it up in the front, Tim May. Uh, Two games in, what is the greatest luxury of the way Lathan Ransom and Caleb Downs are playing? Have they played up to the standards you expected? You understand what I'm saying? And where does it go from here, I guess, in that standpoint? They have, and um, we just keep pushing. we got to push everybody, you know, the, the striving for perfection. And, um, you know, those are two guys, I, you know, Let's face it, we haven't had to unleash very much, so to speak. But you've seen on those uh, specific examples, when we have unleashed them, you know, they go from A to B pretty quick, you know. So uh, I think it's just a, a matter of uh, continuing to push, putting some tweaks in, keeping their aggressiveness alive through the different call like we just haven't had to do it very much yeah. but when it when it shows up it's pretty cool and like you said you don't you don't you hardly ever sleep drink a lot of coffee whatever but is there any kind of comfort of having those you explain the comfort level of having two guys like that on the back side of your defense yeah i think you just um i don't want to say take it for granted but you don't sweat it i mean it's just you you know you know you can go in to those two and say, hey, hey, this week we want to do it this way. And by the way, against this, I want you to make this call. Okay, ready, break. You know, and then you just, you know what I mean? You know, you, when you have to put in these uh, slight adjustments week to week, um, it's not something you don't say, oh, man, can that guy handle that? You know, you just kind of roll. You just kind of roll. Okay, here's what we're going to do. And then, okay, got it, coach. And that's it. So it makes, it certainly makes it easier to make adjustments. Thanks, Thank you. Thanks, Jim.